Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Fitzogan11, and welcome to a different type of video on the channel. Um, if you've been watching uh, my streams or videos lately, I think I've talked about it a few times, I'll be attending the um, Pokemon North American International Championships uh, in VGC in a few days. Uh, as this video goes up, it should have been the close of day one, uh, so we'll know the results of the team. Um, but um, basically, if uh, just a little bit about me, uh, I haven't played too much uh, in the competitive Pokemon scene uh, before. Um, this year, I did attend a local um, tournament, uh, Mid-Season Showdown, and did, uh, went 3-2. and two. I was pretty happy with that result, uh, with a similar team as what we're showing now. Um, and it was just kind of the perfect uh, circumstances arose. Um, I knew I wouldn't have maybe a ton of opportunities like this in my life to go. Uh, it's in Columbus, Ohio, which is uh, a short flight for me um, to get there, and uh, something that I really wanted to try out and see how I could do. Um, with uh, the July 4th week off, uh, it was kind of a perfect opportunity, um, along with having some disposable income because of work. Um, it all just kind of worked out together. Um, I've really liked the format, and um, you know, I wasn't a huge uh, fan, I guess, of Pokemon Moon. Didn't really get into the competitive game. Only put like 100 hours into the game, um, which for me is not that much. Um, but I... Um, like the new format and just wanted to give it a try. Um, I think it'll be a fun tournament and it'll be nice to meet new people and uh, see how I can do. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it about me. We can jump into the team. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, hopefully um, at the time of this upload or afterwards, I'll have a pace bin of this team that you can check out and maybe if I can figure out the Pokemon Global link, I'll uh, get the link for that as well. Uh, I don't know how it works. I've, I haven't posted a team before, but we'll, we can figure it out. I'm sure it's not that difficult. Um, so basically, what my thought process for the season, um, I started out with a rain team really early on in like the first international challenge. Uh, I kind of like that uh, you have speed control with the team as well as uh, some hard hitters and uh, can kind of cause fits for certain team compositions um, where others you know can certainly take it on uh, or have you know certain ways of handling rain um, but um, with Pelipper I didn't think it was like a reliable source of rain and uh, Politoed I didn't really try out extensively uh, and then around March I guess the mid or maybe February the mid-season showdown uh, was kind of starting the dominance of uh, the team of Gengar and Koma O. Um, so basically, I wanted a, some sort of like hyper offensive team that could handle um, more defensive teams. Uh, obviously, Como teams are uh, somewhat balanced or maybe even a little offensive, um, but my thinking was to outspeed those teams, uh, hit them hard right from the first turn, and I think the meta's only gotten more defensive since then, especially with the rise of uh, Chalk, which is. Uh, Cresselia, Heatran, uh, Kangaskhan, Kartana, um, Landorus, and uh, whichever one I'm missing. Um, so uh, it's a pretty defensive team, especially if you have like an Assault Vest Kartana. So I think this team has aged well in that it can have the ability to uh, chunk holes in teams that are um, trying to either have recovery moves uh, or some kind of setup like Calm Mind Tapu Fini. Um, something like that, um, and before they're able to hit those moves, uh, my team's able to kind of uh, crush them. So um, basically, like the main stoppers to this team are priority, uh, like Sucker Punch, uh, Bisharp, and Kangaskhan, as well and f as well as Fake Out, um, which uh, can really kind of put my team on the back end um, and put them kind of a turn behind of where they're looking to be. Um, with this team, uh, it also helps that against defensive teams in that um, I'm not as experienced in any VGC formats as some of my counterparts, uh, even at the mid-season showdown, especially at the North American Championship. Um, and, you know, a lot of these players are able to think a few moves ahead. Um, so I uh, am trying to ruin that by making uh, the game decided within uh, a few moves. Uh, it'll probably... 
uh, have a pretty definitive winner uh, within the first few turns, within the first tailwind or within the first trick room, if my opponent's able to get it off. Um, so um, that's pretty much that. That's my thinking. Um, if you know I'm able to shorten games, I'm probably going to be able to um, not allow my opponent to make as many reads and kind of even the playing field as much as possible. Um, so. For an inexperienced player, I think that's kind of the way to uh, defeat some players that um, you may not be able to beat in a mirror matchup or in like a defensive battle that goes a few turns. Um, so just kind of hit my opponent's team in the mouth and uh, see what happens. Uh, this type of team did well at the midseason showdown, and uh, if I had played a little better, uh, had a potential for top cut, I think I came 10th out of uh, like 28 or 30 people so I was very happy with the performance and played some excellent opposition uh, that was able to kind of learn from my team quickly uh, and prepare better for uh, games two and three of the best of threes um, so I think that's going to be a similar vein that I might be able to catch some wins at the beginning and then I'll just have to figure a way of closing it out on game two and three so hopefully that wasn't too long-winded before we get into the actual team, but that's kind of the way I was thinking. Um, I have a few other hyper-offensive cores that uh, I kind of like, and maybe we'll be able to show them off in like the Philly Regionals in September and uh, some tournaments like that. I think VGC19 will be even more fun, but we'll get uh, into that when we do, uh, hopefully with some legendaries in Ultra Sun and Moon. So um, basically... Uh, like I said, this team comp very offensive, and the first core, uh, the main core, is Terrakion Whimsicott. So uh, this was obviously in core introduced in Generation 5, um, where um, basically Whimsicott beats up Terrakion and activates its justified ability, which um, increases attack every time uh, Terrakion is hit with a dark type move. Um, so on the first turn of a VGC battle, Terrakion can get up to plus four and attack in the same turn. So um, this type of strategy is usually considered lower level ladder on uh, Pokemon Showdown, and uh, you don't see it as much on Battle Spot. Um, so it was kind of thrown away in that um, basically Terrakion in the fifth generation and six couldn't really KO everything it needed to in one hit, especially with Rock Slide and Close Combat. Uh, what I think it gives, what uh, it has an edge in the 7th generation is with the introduction of Z-moves. Uh, Rocky MZ at plus 4 or even plus 3 pretty much knocks out any Pokemon that you're looking to knock out, including Cresselia, which is a big one. And if you can't knock it out with Rocky uh, with Continental Crush, uh, then Close Combat will almost certainly knock it out. Um, so uh, it has a very good base speed. Um, the threats to look for at base 108 are... Uh, Metagross and uh, Kartana at max speed. Um, so those definitely present challenges. A lot of Kartanas right now are not running max speed, they're running Assault Vest. Uh, if I can find that out against like um, teams, uh, against chalk teams that I'll be playing, uh, and I find out that Kartana is slower, uh, it gives me a huge leg up, and really only Kangaskhan's fake out has uh, really the only opportunity for my opponent to defeat me. Um, getting a fake out off and then trick rooming. Uh, in the same turn, or at least Icy Wind at the very least. Um, that's really my opponent's only chance, I think, if they're running Chalk. Um, and even if those turns don't work out for me in each game, I think I'll still have a chance from the back. Um, so, um, Terrakion and Whimsicott weren't totally used as a combination in the Mid-Season Showdown or on online tournaments, um, but I think I've learned how to better use it as I've gone on with the team, and when I can aggressively bring it in, um, and when I just have to bluff it instead. Um, and that core doesn't really, um, they don't have to be together to be effective, especially Whimsicott. It's basically good with every member of my team except Incineroar. Um, so Whimsicott still has a vital role to play. It's probably the MVP of the team. Um, just from the beginning, I can almost assure you that. Um, so Terrakion, pretty standard. Taunt is there for Cresselias um, that want to go for Trick Room and don't have Mental Herb. Um, so, uh, a good um, four moves for that. Terrakion doesn't need a ton of coverage. Uh, could have Exorcer or Earthquake on a team that uh, could utilize Earthquake better. Um, but Terrakion's pretty standard. You know what it's going to do. 
um, but it can catch teams off guard uh, in team preview, uh, bringing out first turn and basically going for the win right away. So uh, Terrakion is a pretty cool Pokemon. I think it can do some work uh, at this tournament, uh, especially if people bring more and more defensive stuff. Um, so uh, that this is the Pokemon that really doesn't allow teams to set up Calm Minds or anything like that. So. Uh, moving on to Whimsicott, um, like I said, it has the beat-up move for Terrakion. It can also uh, kill Pokemon or break Focus Sashes, uh, as well as um, both take out Mimikyu's Disguise and, uh, disguise and possible Focus Sash, um, which is very nice. Um, but beat-up is mostly going to be used on Terrakion. It also has Tailwind, Fake Tears, and Encore. So Tailwind and Fake Tears are staples for the team. I need the speed control, especially mostly to match other Tailwinds, as well as provide Charizard a chance to outspeed things, uh, as you'll see in a second. It's not max speed. Uh, Encore uh, had been Memento there, uh, which um, causes Whimsicott to faint and uh, causes a Pokemon, uh, opposing Pokemon to lose attack and special attack by two stages, basically rendering it useless. Um, so it was good for end games, um, but I think it'd be more useful on a team that had maybe every other Pokemon having Protect, and I think we have uh, three total, which isn't that many. Um, basically, it would have to be used on a Protect turn uh, because of it Mementos uh, on a Prankster, basically the first Pokemon to go. Um, then the other Pokemon on the field on my side would get double targeted. Uh, even if the one of the Pokemon has reduced stats, uh, it's still not a great position for me. Uh, unless I can basically get in in the next turn and set up, uh, which I don't have a ton of setup moves on this team, so um, Memento didn't really work for this team. I like it though on Whimsicott. I think Whimsicott can run a bunch of different moves and be su successful. Um, the spread is pretty standard, just max HP, max speed uh, to ensure that it's outspeeding Terrakion. And uh, I didn't know it was 116 speed, I thought it was 115, but um, okay, so. Um, I don't think there's any speed tiers that it has to outspeed, so some more could probably go in defense, or special defense, um, but we're going to leave it like that because I can't rebreed one uh, right now, so uh, this is Tuesday when I'm recording, and I won't have much time tomorrow. Um, so pretty standard. Um, like I said, Memento had been on there, and I wanted to have the threat of Encore, um, but people kind of, ch um, when I played them in best of threes especially, uh, challenge you to go for Encore and so that they know it's there. Um, so they assumed I didn't have it, especially when going for Trick Room, they stayed in next turn. Uh, or Fake Outs with Kangaskhan's, obviously it doesn't work against... Uh, Prankster doesn't work against Incineroar, which is a very common Pokemon, um, but I didn't see Incineroar as like the biggest challenge to defeating the team. Um, so I think we should be fine there. Um, but Fake Out Pressure is obviously going to be a hindrance to the team. So uh, that's the main core. The other core um, that I originally created for the team was Sun uh, mode. We'll get back to Tapu Koko in a second. Um, with Charizard Y and uh, Venusaur. And originally, first iteration of the team had Fire Pledge and Grass Pledge, uh, which if combined uh, will cause a field of fire on the opposing uh, opposition team. Uh, taking away health every turn for four turns, uh, which is a pretty good secondary ability. And in the Sunfire Pledge is doing even more than an overheat, I believe at 150 base power, without any negative side effects of overheat. Um, last second before the mid-season showdown, I switched uh, that from Fire Grass Pledge to uh, overheat and uh, whatever, Giga Drain or Energy Ball and Venusaur. Basically, uh, I didn't see it uh, being totally successful and um, definitively being able to get uh, both of those moves off in the same turn. I don't believe it works like round, where the first Pokemon goes and then the second goes immediately after. I believe you'd have to wait until Charizard's turn after Venusaur's Chlorophyll, uh, if I'm explaining that uh, well enough. So, I really thought bulky Charizard was more necessary than like a max speed one. And at max speed, it still can get um, hit pretty hard before it's able to go. Um, but this bulky Charizard allows it to take uh, some hits well, especially like non-stabs uh, rock slides, uh, mainly from 
Landorus, but also maybe from Tapu Bulu, um, and basically be able to KO most of them with overheat. Um, and Heat Wave does an incredible amount of damage, even though it's uh, only hitting uh, not very hard uh, if two Pokemon are on the field. Um, so uh, Venusaur, I thought, was okay uh, in the games that we played, um, but it didn't really have a ton of Sun Turns to work with, and on the turn of Charizard's Mega Evolution, it doesn't get the Chlorophyll Boost, um, which is not ideal. Uh, so, on that iteration, Charizard had Hidden Power Ground mainly for um, Heatran and Incineroar. Um, basically, uh, revisiting the team after the mid-season showdown, I realized that those two Pokemon should be prioritized by Terrakion, since um, almost none of them are running Scarf, and uh, Terrakion can probably successfully set up on those Pokemon. So, um... I prioritize Solar Beam on Charizard to be able to feed things like Gastrodon, um, and um, hopefully this Pokemon will be able to deal somewhat with Rain Teams. We'll need the help of Whimsicott and uh, Incineroar's Fake Out probably the most. Uh, Tapu Koko would be the win condition for that team, um, but Charizard's a really heavy hitter, probably the heaviest, one of the heaviest in the entire metagame at 159 Special Attack with the Sun with incredibly strong moves. A very good Pokemon. Uh, not always used a ton, but uh, one of probably the top three Mega Evolutions and will always be uh, probably top three. It has uh, direct counters like Charizard X with Thunder Punch, but um, you know Charizard Y is going to be an essential part of the team uh, to get us to the end game where Tapu Koko can finish it off. Um, so most Tapu Kokos in this generation are running uh, Life Orb sets or Electrium Z sets, uh, I think Choice Specs can definitely catch an opponent off guard with how hard Tapu Koko is hitting. Uh, only 95 special attack. I think Electrium Z uh, can sometimes leave something to be desi uh, desired. Uh, even though it gets one big hit off, sometimes it's not uh, as impactful in the end game as you would hope. Uh, but with the uh, being paired with Whimsicott and Incineroar uh, as pretty good partners, uh, Tapu Koko can put in some work, and um, you know, Tapu Koko's uh, very essential to both cleaning up the game as well as taking out some big, uh, some of the team's biggest threats, uh, like Tapu Lele, um, would be a big one, and can do a ton of damage uh, at the beginning of the match, get out, and uh, come back in at the end of the match, lock itself into a different move or Volt Switch again, and uh, be able to clean up. It had a lot of 1v2s in the mid-season showdown with Dazzling Gleam uh, once uh, the rest of the opponent's team was very weakened. Um, so, pretty standard, um, but not many people are running choice specs, and that may cause uh, some people to um, not realize how hard uh, he's going to be hitting. Um, so, as you can see, like, three Pokemon already, extremely offensive, um, trying to hit basically as hard as possible and uh, have a ton of wall-breaking potential. Um, so, uh, the only difference is that Terrakion's kind of the early game supporter. Charizard uh, gets uh, from the middle of the game to the end game, uh, and Tapu Koko finishes it off basically within uh, four or five turns tops. So, um, that's pretty much that, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm explaining things okay. Um, I didn't have too much of a script, and I know we're going at like almost 20 minutes already, but um, the last... Uh, Pokemon uh, was basically Incineroar was released uh, with Intimidate very close to the mid-season showdown and basically everybody was using it. Uh, originally I had a much more offensive one uh, but still with Assault Vest. I think Assault Vest is a little bit better than the Berry um, and th than the Super Berry since Super Berry some uh, teams can try to play around that and still KO it uh, from more than 25 HP left. Uh, I think things like Cresselia can reliably get the 50% berry off, but some others are uh, a little bit risky plays sometimes. Um, so I just like the uh, idea of Salt Fest, especially with Fake Out User. Um, with no attack, as you can see, Adam, it, it still picks up a lot of the knockouts that you're going to need uh, while still being a lot of HP. Um, so basically, in this scenario, uh, with the HP that it's at, it could, uh, along with Tapu Koko and Whimsicott, somewhat handle 
uh, like a combination of Excel Gore Tavalele, uh, still being able to flare blitz it, and um, being able to fake out uh, on a bunch of switches into electric terrain basically, and um, basically that's one of my weakest matchups. So hopefully I don't see it, I don't want any shenanigans basically, especially with Final Gambit, but Incinera would kind of help out in those matchups. Uh, fake out's pretty essential in VGC in general, pretty much every format, and um, Incinera is probably the best one at it right now. Uh, Intimidate can get us into trouble against things like uh, Defiant, especially Bisharp I think is the biggest problem for the team, uh, so hopefully we don't see much of it. Um, and which is weird because the typing would suggest we can handle it, but um, it can hit really hard and has good priority moves. Uh, whereas my Lodic, even if it's Scarfed, I'm not uh, incredibly worried about it. And um, the Bird One Braviary, uh, not uh, the biggest of threat, just the threat of Tailwind, I think, is bigger than anything um, for this team. But. Um, Incineroar is going to be in a lot of games just like Whimsicott, um, just not um, having a huge impact offensively, but still allowing the offensive threats um, to get to somewhat of a suitable end game where I have at least an opportunity at winning. Um, I also didn't mention that uh, Tampa Coco had Thunder. Uh, basically, it's it was Thunder, and it was uh, Electroweb after I missed a few. I never used Electroweb. Uh, it would have to be more like an AV or defensive. Uh, Tapu Coco to have Electroweb. Uh, so Thunder can get me basically out of a situation that might be losing um, and possibly get a paralysis or uh, just hit very hard in general, uh, something that I might not be able to kill otherwise. Um, so um, not the best and only hits 50% if the sun is up, but there might be like a couple scenarios where I need it um, where I feel like there's never going to be a situation where. Um, Thunderbolt is like that much better than Volt Switch. Um, there's really not any KOs that I missed out on. I don't think ever um, where I'm where I was like, oh, I should be running Thunderbolt over Volt Switch. So uh, that was just a quick aside. Um, Incinera is also shiny, the newest one to the team. Um, I got one recently, and um, basically the last slot, like I said, had been Venusaur, um, and then I I tested out some. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, we should be good. Uh, hopefully the format didn't change. Um, so it was Venusaur with a Protect, uh, a Poison Move, Grass Move, and Hidden Power Ice. So, um, like I said, it didn't really work out because you kind of almost have to Protect first turn, uh, or a uh, Pokemon like Tapu Lele that can do a ton of damage while the sun is going up. Tested out other Megas, especially Mega Love Honey. Uh, even with Fake Out Last Resort, uh, which can KO Gengars, uh, which is important. Uh, Gengar is a huge issue since um, it speed ties with Tapu Koko, uh, 130 base speed, um, where Alakazam, I believe, is 150, Lopunny was 135. Um, Lopunny gets hurt, especially in Shadow Tag, um, especially with Gothitelle, where teams can rotate uh, Intimidators, so Last Resort isn't even doing as much as you would hope. Uh, as well as Tapu Lele uh, being forced to fake out on the first turn, uh, so needing Tapu Koko uh, as a support mon. So not the best. I also tried out other very fast Megas like Aerodactyl, um, as well as some slower ones like Glalie. I think Glalie actually has um, somewhat use, just because of how hard it hits, uh, not even with Explosion, uh, but it can run Explosion if it wants to. Um, and yeah, there were other support mons, maybe like Bisharp, uh, which I think is a very good mon, and this team didn't have priority, um, so that was one. There's probably some other more supportive mons <laughs> instead of all offense, like I've been talking, um, but I settled with Alakazam, basically because it can uh, cause Gengar Como fits. Uh, I can basically guarantee lead Alakazam to have a Coco, and, um, be pretty happy with the result, uh, basically forcing in uh, Tapu Bulu, which is probably going to be a teammate of theirs, um, and not allowing uh, Como to get its boosts off, basically doing anything I can to prevent it. And um, yeah, so Alkazam has Inner Focus, uh, usually it runs Magic Card, um, but I don't think status is overly important. 
and uh, hopefully I don't get put to sleep. In uh, I have electric terrain for that, um, so hopefully minimal amount of that. And um, inner focus might come into play, uh, but it, it'd be a rare occasion uh, because Incineroar and Kangaskhan can um, kind of take it out immediately. So Alakazam is probably going to come to the least amount of matchups, but it helps me handle um, some of the weakest matchups that I have. That's basically the thinking behind that. Um, so yeah, it achieves some pretty crazy... Um, is it? Yeah. Like that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, it was Protect. It's a pretty easy one to make. Uh, Psychic Shadow Ball for Tapu Lele, and Hidden Power Ice, it can outspeed um, Adamant Scarf Landorus, which is very important, and something that I can bring for it. Uh, I run Timid, um, so that I kind of like my speed dares being a little bit separate, and if it runs modest, it'll only outspeed uh, Tapu Koko by two points. Um, and it wouldn't outspeed Scarf Landorus in that situation, so something that I wanted to keep in mind. Uh, Scarf Special Landorus was something that Japanese players caused me a lot of trouble in uh, some of the international um, games, uh, international online uh, games. So basically, Alakazam has, I believe, the highest special attack of any uh, non-mythical or uh, banned Pokemon that I can think of, and 150 base speed is nothing to laugh at either. Uh, like I said, things like Kangaskhan and Chalk matchups probably aren't going to be its strong suit. Um, but if other teams try to bring highly offensive mons, including the Gengar Como, um, Alakazams for that, I didn't really see a Pokemon that like stood out as the sixth slot um, that can really help out this team a lot. Um, so I think Alakazam could put in some work, and uh, with Tapu Koko and Whimsicott basically being its main supports. Um, as well as fake out pressure. Um, so, like I said, probably the least used Mon, um, but that's the team builder. Uh, I hope to do oh, uh, pretty good. Obviously the goal is top cutting, um, but I believe only the top eight make it this year. Um, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, I'm just gonna have fun with it and um, hope we can do at least as well as the mid-season showdown, catch some players off guard and uh, hopefully get to a strong start and uh, pick up the pace from there. That was just another video editing, so um, I'm trying to get a few videos out before uh, I leave on Thursday. Um, so I really appreciate your guys' support through all this. I know this uh, might be a different kind of video for my main viewership, um, but I probably will try to get into some more VGC action uh, in the future. Like I said, I'll probably be attending Philadelphia Regionals as well as New Hampshire next year, and uh, looking forward to that. Um, I'm at zero CP uh, on uh, the 2018 season, so I would have to make finals, I believe, to uh, advance to Worlds, uh, which will be in Nashville uh, next month. Sorry for that cut, it was just me sneezing. Uh, I didn't really have any more thoughts there, uh, but really, I appreciate your guys' support through all of this. I know the channel will change a little bit um, with some more VGC content, probably Showdown um, streams and uh, Mario Kart streams, hopefully. I'm getting the Switch set up with the Elgato. I think I have it working, but I just want to do a few tests once I get back. And I'll be traveling a little bit for work as well. Um, so, uh, as well as uh, in late in the year, we'll be playing uh, some Pokemon uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, uh, which is why I got the Switch and the Elgato in the first place. So, Thank you guys again so much. I really hope I have a lot of fun with this. Um, no, excuse me, going to take it overly seriously, just going to have fun and see how we do. So I'll see you guys next week, and uh, there will be maybe two videos in the meantime for you guys. So thanks, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.